Ted Cassidy was a film and television actor best known for portraying Lurch in the sitcom The Addams Family. His staggering stature is what got him his signature role, but it's also what resulted in his tragic and untimely death at age 46. Join Factsverse as we explore how Ted Cassidy's cause of death is what made him the perfect Lurch. Ted Cassidy was always different. Ted Cassidy was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, July 31, 1932. Early on, his parents noticed there was something unusual about him. He grew to an immense height at a young age and was six foot nine by the time he was an adult. He also had a booming, bass-filled voice that would help him get radio work early on in his career. Before that, his immense height helped him get noticed as a high school athlete, and he went on to play basketball at Florida's Stetson University. The condition that gave him his height is known as acromegaly, and it's a condition numerous stars with large physiques have suffered from. Another celebrity who suffered from it was Andre the Giant, and he ended up dying as a result of complications related to the condition. In the decades leading to his death, Andre's large physique helped him become a standout wrestler and eventually a bigger star thanks to film appearances. Acromegaly is a condition that causes strange, tumorous growths that only get worse over the course of a person's life. The condition can sometimes manifest itself differently, but the end results are typically the same. Following his graduation from Stetson, Ted Cassidy married Margaret Helen Jesse. This was in 1956, and the two remained married for two decades, until shortly before Ted's tragic and untimely death. Ted had begun working in radio and was one of the many reporters who helped inform the world of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Ted's radio days saw him living in Dallas with his wife, and it wasn't until 1960 that Ted began working in filmed entertainment. Ted's voice got him his first film work. Ted's first gig on the screen actually came as a result of his booming voice instead of his looming physique. It was a voiceover gig that saw him voicing an alien in the film The Angry Red Planet. Only a handful of years later, Ted received the role that made him a star. That was the butler Lurch in The Addams Family, which premiered in 1964. As compared to his deep voice, The Addams Family aimed to take advantage of his gigantic height. The character of Lurch was initially supposed to be mute, but Ted ended up improvising the character's iconic catchphrase of You rang? early into filming, which was kept in. The Addams Family also utilized Ted Cassidy as the disembodied hand that serves as the titular family's pet. That pet's name was Thing, and the hand belonged to Ted. That is, unless the character of Lurch was also on the screen. Ted wasn't the only actor on The Addams Family utilized first and foremost for his unique physique. Felix Sia was an actor born with dwarfism, and Felix was used on the show for his miniature size. He played Cousin It several times as a guest star. Felix went on to live a long and healthy life after the Adams family ended, only passing away in the last few years. Despite the large impact the Adams family has had on popular culture over the years, the series wasn't all that big of a hit when it debuted. It only lasted two seasons before being canceled in 1966. As the series grew more and more popular via reruns, the property continued to be revived in various ways. Some of these revivals happened while Ted was still alive, and he was allowed the opportunity to reprise the role of Lurch. He played Lurch in 1977's Halloween with the new Adams Family, which was a made-for-television feature that premiered only two years before his passing. He also got to reprise the role physically via a fourth-wall-breaking cameo on 1966's Batman, which is another enduring television series that ended before its time. And the actor got to reprise the character of Lurch via voiceover on an animated series based on the Adams Family before his death. This episode is brought to you by Monk Pack. Monk Pack offers low-sugar, keto-friendly bars that are plant-based, gluten-free, and non-GMO. They're the perfect snack for anyone who's trying to eat better or cut back on sugar and carbs without sacrificing taste. Monk Pack Keto Granola Bars and Nut and Seed Bars contain 1 gram of sugar or less, 2-3 to three grams of net carbs, and each bar contains 150 calories or less. My favorite flavor is the dark chocolate cocoa. I have a bit of a sweet tooth and this bar hits the spot without any added junk that's bad for me. The bars are soft, chewy, and perfect for a guilt-free sweet treat. Monk Pack is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. Get 20% off your first purchase of any Monk Pack product by visiting monkpack.com and entering our code FAXVERSE at checkout. Or just simply click on the link in the description down below to get 20% off. Ted continued working on television. 
From 1968 to 69, Ted could be seen portraying the character of Injun Joe on the short-lived live-action television series The New Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. The series was a rare live-action outing from Hanna-Barbera Productions, which Ted worked with in a voiceover capacity many times over the course of his career. He also provided voices for Hanna-Barbera works such as CBS's 1966 animated series Frankenstein Jr. and The Impossibles. He even provided the roar for Hanna-Barbera's Godzilla in the 1978 animated series. All of these opportunities were presented to Ted as a result of his exceptionally deep voice, which in turn was granted to the actor as a result of his acromegaly. Sadly, the negative effects of the condition were worsening into the 1970s, and his work on Godzilla was some of his very last work. Besides his role as Lurch, he's perhaps best known for a small role on the original Star Trek, as well as an antagonistic role in 1969's Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Both of those roles took advantage of Ted's intimidating physical stature. Of course, Star Trek took advantage of Ted's stature by casting him as an alien, while Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid simply cast him as an exceptionally intimidating villainous figure. Ted has remained a popular figure among Star Trek fans over the years. The only time Star Trek ever showed Ted on the screen was in one single episode, but the series did use his voice in a couple other episodes. And Ted also worked with creator Gene Roddenberry on a later pilot. During the time Ted was working on the new adventures of Huckleberry Finn, he crashed the set of Star Trek and interrupted a scene while he was still dressed up as the character of Engine Joe. Ted walked into frame, picked up William Shatner mid-performance, and carried him off to the side. This resulted in one of the most memorable bloopers from the original series, and it's perhaps one of the reasons fans of Star Trek continue to remember Ted so fondly. Ted's character on Star Trek was known as Rook, and he appeared in the 1966 episodes What Are Little Girls Made Of? Ted Cassidy's Final Years and Untimely Death during the mid-1970s, a decade after the end of The Addams Family and around the time the series was gaining popularity via reruns, Ted was one of several large actors vying for the role of the Incredible Hulk in the upcoming TV series of the same name. That role went to Lou Ferrigno. While Ted's large stature was granted as a result of his acromegaly, Lou Ferrigno proved a more sustainable choice because his stature came as a result of his naturally large size and bodybuilding routine. Though Lou played the role, some recordings of Ted Cassidy were used for the character's otherworldly roars over the course of the series, even after Ted's 1979 passing. By the end of the 70s, Ted's acromegaly was getting worse. While the actor had been able to live with the condition before, it was now beginning to affect his vital functions. It became clear he'd need heart surgery to live. Sadly, the surgery resulted in complications that ended up killing the actor anyway. These complications arose while he was at home recovering, and he passed away January 16, 1979. He was only 46. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Ted Cassidy? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.